Honestly, guys, I'm getting pretty sick of this. I mean, look at her. She's just a little girl. Why won't they leave her alone? Why do they keep attacking? Why won't they leave her alone? I think we got a plan. Take a peek at that, guys. You see, it says Tommy Apple. You see any plants there? Not a single one. What's more, look at this. What's that one say? Tommy Apple, what do you see? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So what did you want to grow this year, Sweet Pepper? I wanted to grow Tommy Apples. She wanted to grow some Tommy Apple melons. And we planted them once, and then we had to plant them again, right? Because the squirrels kept on digging them up and the other bugs. Yep, at first the squirrels came along and they dug them up. They just killed them, just like that. And then the bugs came, the squash bugs. And what were they doing to them? Um, eating them. Just destroying them and eating them. So this is the third time now. I'll tell you what. Desperate times call for desperate measures, right? Yeah. So because of the issues we've been having lately, I decided, you know what, I've, I've got to do something. And um, worked on a couple different designs, worked on a couple different plans. Decided, you know what, I'm just gonna build some frames with some screen at the top. And if I put this down over the top of these plants, then it should prevent most things from getting in. It's not foolproof, but I'll tell you what, I put them out the other night on a couple of our other squash plants, and um, there were little beetles on them, and there were squash bugs on them, but they weren't able to get into the middle, which is exactly what we were looking for. <sighs> the goal is pretty much to take the young, tender baby plants. You know, they come up, they got their first two leaves, and they get their real leaves, real leaves coming in the middle, and these tiny little yellow beetles with black stripes come, and they just start eating away at the leaves. up close but I bet if you went even closer it'd look as evil as the artist's depiction they'll just cover them and devour them in like a night and the squash bugs come along and start sucking the juice out of the um, out of the stem or whatever it is they do um, up north we had something looks very similar we call them leaf footed pine seed beetles, so leaf footed pine seed beetles. Down in Texas, they're even bigger. They call them chinches, real down in South Texas. Here they call them squash bugs. So here's what one of those evil buggers looks like up close. I would not recommend touching these guys unless you plan on killing them. Because they do have a very foul stench, they admit. Emit. They probably admit they stink too. They all look the same, same body build, same chemical warfare. If you, if you touch them, they can emit this foul stench. Um, I've been squishing them barehanded lately. I've, I've had to resort to it, so sometimes my hands just stink. They've got that kind of almost nauseating chemical warfare type smell on them, but we've got to do something. Um, I didn't really grow a whole lot of squash back up in Wisconsin. Or, uh, I mean, we grew some melons, we grew some stuff, but, but we, I never saw anything like this till I moved down here. So, we've got a couple different predators, you know, that come. The squirrels, I sometimes call idiots of the woods, because a lot of what they do doesn't make sense. So they'll come in out of nowhere, 
and they'll just start destroying stuff for no reason. And then you've got those little yellow beetles with black stripes that come and just start eating the leaves like crazy. Uh, we tried some DE and it didn't Is that even a really. Butterfly? Yeah, a nice beautiful oh. butterfly over there. But uh, it didn't even seem to slow them down too much, which was kind of disappointing. I might have gotten a different kind of DE or something that doesn't work as good as the old stuff we had. And then these uh, le uh, squash bugs um, just wreaking havoc on things. And then also you've got kind of the uh, whatever worm, caterpillar, whatever it is that burrows through the actual stem of these plants. Sometimes they can make it through that. So obviously this is only protecting five sides, not the bottom. So we can still have those guys bore up from the middle, but I'm just trying to let the leaves exist, let the stem exist, protect from all these other predators that are coming in. Because uh, I'll tell you what, these little Tommy Apple Melons we got from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company, we thought that was pretty cool. This is what Sweet Pepper picked out this year to grow for herself and her family. And uh, we're looking forward to it, right? Yeah. Yeah, we want to enjoy it. And what do you think? A nice little melon that we can cut open and enjoy and taste. You think it's going to be juicy? Yeah. But what do we have to do before we can get a melon? Um, we have to wait a few days. Yeah, we got to get the plant to grow too, right? So uh, I'll just kind of show you guys the basic design, what we're working with, and then uh, like I said, the goal is just to kind of let the plant at least fill up this little area and then we can remove it and put on a new one and at least let them get established. Let them be able to uh, stand a chance because some of these, they just kind of come up and then they disappear. They come up and then they disappear in almost a night. And they actually just took out some pie pumpkins too, just like that. And they were going pretty well. So here's some sugar pie pumpkins. We were growing for Mama Pepper, but flip them over. Just saw one here a minute ago. You got those squash bugs sometimes sucking on the, uh, and out of all the ones we had planted, which was like four or so, we have one right now. Yeah, there's the one guy. Got a little beetle down there. Come here, buddy. Feel my fingers? There's a tiny little beetle. It's yellow. Black stripes. They eat the leaves. And then you got the squash bugs. Yeah, they just squashed. That squash bug, but they attack like crazy the stems of all this stuff. So it's been a fight, and even two days ago, we still had a plant or two of the pie pumpkins here. But look at this now. You can see all this under this leaf. All those little dots are just all eggs. And look at this stem once. Look at that. Look at that stem. That's just nothing but eggs on the underside of every one of those stems. So unfortunately, this guy's getting uprooted. I'm gonna have to plant it again. But that's an insane amount of eggs. And honestly, if we would have left this unchecked, look at how much of a problem we would have been asking for. And I'm guessing, honestly, there's over 100, probably 200 new babies that would have came out of there. Wow, which is why we gotta step up our game. Just look at those evil little buggers. Oh man, I gotta take them out. So I wanted to pick a good uniform size, something that would work. And uh, if I made them all the same size, they'd be stackable. So I chose 12 inches. So by taking an inch thick oak boards, cutting them at 12 inches long is able to make some nice squares that would be hopefully big enough to allow the little plants to get to the size that they need where they could really do a better job fending for themselves and they wouldn't be these weak little seedlings. So I'd screw them together, make some nice square um, bases, and then I had to do the top. For the top, I cut the um, wire mesh screen that I was using at 12 and a half inches, which would give me an overlap on the 12 inch boards and create a good cover for it where sunlight and moisture and water could still get through, but that these bugs could not. So the sides would be protected and then the top would as well. The goal is to hopefully have these last for many years to come 
and by making them all the same size I can stack them easily to store them for the off season as well and once the plant gets big enough I can move it to the next plant over or the next time I plant ones I can use them there. Unfortunately some of the plants I had previously planted were already completely eradicated and dead because of the bugs but some of them were still doing good so if they looked healthy enough I would simply remove and kill any bugs that I could find on them and once I made sure that they were pretty clean then I could place my new uh, covers over the top of them and get started as creating this barrier between the pests and our plants. So like I said, we did a little bit of experimentation, um, but I like that design best. Pretty much I just take four foot long pieces of board, cut off the same board so they're the same uh, width, get eight screws, screw them together so they're flat and flush, and then take a 12 and a half inch square of the nice metal um, screen and put that atop. That gives them the protection they need, it gives it the weight on the sides that it needs to get down to ground level and works pretty good. Even here, you see I have a dipper gourd. And we tried a different design here. I do not like this design as much. It's more effort, more screen, more screws. Don't like it, but it's not uncommon to have something like this. All these little things coming up. And then tomorrow, just to have them be gone in the morning. No, we don't want that. We want them to grow, right chickens? Right, chickens? So for these, since they have less space to grow in, uh, 12 by 12 isn't really going to work out as well for us. Because with the width of it, then you're pretty much a 13 inch square um, area. So I'm going to make some smaller ones for these and hopefully get them established so that they can actually run up this fence for a different project I'm working on I'll get to soon. But here in the garden, the bigger ones work just fine. This is one of the uh, Benny Codina um, little mini miniature watermelons that Pinky Pepper's growing. So we're protecting that right now because the one we didn't protect doesn't look too good and is going to need to be replanted. And there's only so much time you get in a year before you're done replanting. Just check out the uh, check out the beautiful flowers here. Those are on our Austrian winter peas. Just beautiful. But we're going to grow our own supply. So we can save the seed and plant this winter as a cover crop and something tasty the animals can have too. But just beautiful little flowers, I think. And same thing here, if you look, I mean this leaf had gotten eaten up a bit. We got some different crookneck squash and some other ones here. But pretty much I'm just letting them go till they kind of fill in this little area. You know, get them started, give them some power some strength 
some opportunity to kind of uh, exist and not just get killed right away. And then hopefully they'll be able to fight off those different pests a little easier. And same thing up here next to our purple ice plants. There's a couple of uh, ones that were doing pretty good. These ones on the end um, had gotten hit pretty hard. And are probably going to need to be replanted now. I tried to protect what was left. This one seems to be doing a little bit better job. But you can see, you know, look at what happened to that leaf. There's barely anything left. This one will probably make it, but I'll replant the other one. But then pretty much, like, this guy's getting kind of close. Uh, you can see this as well. This is just some different hot pepper, ghost peppers and stuff I sprinkled on top of it. But this guy's doing a lot better than he was. Every once in a while you'll see where a, uh, oh, see there's a squash bug. Where a squash bug will make its way in there. There it is. I just squish them with my bare hands now even though they, it's got like blue goo that came out of my finger there. It's complete chemical warfare in my opinion. Don't like it at all. That one probably burrowed underneath. I started trying to do his thing, but the cool thing is, if it gets in, it don't really get out because it's got what it needs. It prevents the other ones from getting in, and then it traps them, so I can come kill those little guys. In here, how are you doing? Yeah, there's one in there too. Look at you. Man. Not appreciating that. There it is, kind of dirty. Yeah. Sorry. I need to feed my family. So you're gonna die. Not foolproof, but definitely better than what we were dealing with. And you can see that too, look at the old leaves. The old leaves, shredded and holy. The new leaves, pretty intact. Pretty intact, looking pretty nice, so. I don't know, as far as I know too, the squash bugs, I mean squash, pumpkins, my snake gourds, all sorts of things that'll attack um, the watermelons, different things like that. Just not, not wanting to fight that fight right now. So, made up a number of these so far. Like I said, uh, and I made them all the same size too. I figured if I made them 12 inches, the board goes from here to here, and then it goes the next direction, so you're pretty much 13 by 13. They're stackable. Eventually I plan on building a garden shed behind the uh, hops and um, you know storing a lot of my stuff in it so if they're stackable and all the same size that'll work out really good and uh, I'll be doing a pea project soon too I got my peas oh that lettuce is looking really good I got my peas planted late but if you look here there are still some varieties like these wandos oh man there's a, a good quantity of them coming in. And this year I'm actually not even gonna be really eating them. I'm just making sure that I have some that do well in my area. And if they do well in my area, especially when I fail at uh, getting them in on time, then those are the ones for me. And I'll save seeds this year. And then uh, either plant them this fall, maybe try for a fall crop, or back in the spring. And I'll tell you what, this is my first time ever growing Oregon Giants. Yeah. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So, the Oregon Giant P. Yeah, look at those. Now, them are pods. Man, I think that's going to be one of my favorite varieties moving forward because they're doing pretty good. So, pretty much they're going to run up here real quickly and then fizzle out while the uh, Chinese red noodle beans grow up the whole thing and then the ox heart carrots are able to produce at a lower level below that. So, three crops from one little area. I'm thinking it'll work. So far, so good. But, all right, that's what I'm doing, guys. I'm fighting a fight. I'm trying to uh, win one for the family. I'm trying to let my little girl experience, you know, just the joy of growing something special. She picked it out herself. We're gonna do what we can to try to set her up for success. And hopefully, before too long, we'll be tasting some of her own homegrown Tommy apple melons. So I know not everyone's going to want to go through the process of uh, building those things like that, but to me, 
Um, if I build them once, they should last for a couple years. I should be able to rotate them through some things as I plant through the summer. I won't need as many as the plants I have. And then, you know what, if I like had the company, like you ever see those strainers, just the metal strainers with the handle? If I had a company that made those, like, I'm pretty sure they sell them at the dollar stores. I would totally just design one with a slightly heavier bottom, got that mesh over the top, and I would sell it as a gardening tool just to kind of be a, a temporary pest uh, barrier. And I bet, I bet people would buy them. I would spend, you know, a couple bucks a piece for those instead of just uh, going through all the effort of making them myself. But I'm not there yet, so got to make them myself because I don't know anyone making those. All right, guys, Papa out. Do you think that's going to help? Yeah. Okay. But probably ants might get in. Well, ants ain't as big as a problem for us as those other guys. I hope yours will grow for real good. That we can eat them, right? Yeah, because there's bugs are and they're supposed to eat them. That's right. All right. As always, I'm Papa Pepper, and I'd like to remind you, don't post for free. If you'd like to be part of a revolution in social media, an economic power to the people where users can actually blog for cryptocurrency, then I'd recommend that you check out steamit.com and join the revolution. Pop out.